Every living thing, from tiny bacteria to plants and animals, is mostly made of water. And inside of these living things, dissolved gases need to be exchanged. On a trade? Yeah. Charged particles need to cross membranes. The gate is open. First! And proteins need to be built and moved from one location to another. DNA, RNA, protein. These small actions are what keep us alive, and they all happen inside a solution of water. Have you ever wondered why? Why water? Why do all the things needed to keep us alive happen in water? Well, it's partly because water is such a good solvent. Water dissolves acids, sugars, salts, and even gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. In fact, it's so good at dissolving things that we call it the universal solvent. But that name's a little misleading because water doesn't dissolve everything. If water dissolved everything, then life on Earth, if we could even call it life, would just be one thing, one big ocean of organic molecules. Fortunately for us, water does not dissolve everything. Water does not dissolve oil. And in this installment of Science Mom's Guide to Water series, we're going to explore how oil and water don't mix with four investigations. Ocean in a bottle, lava lamp, oil lamp, and a grease fire explosion. But before we do our investigations, let's look at why water doesn't dissolve oil. To understand why water and oil don't mix, you need to know that water is a polar molecule. One side of it has a negative charge, and the other side is positively charged. And this difference in charge, positive on one side and negative on the other, this is what makes water so good at dissolving things. Because salts, acids, and sugars all have charged parts that are attracted to the water. But oil? Oil is almost entirely made of hydrogen and carbon. It doesn't have any charges for the water to be attracted to, and this is why oil and water don't mix well together. Also, they have different densities. The oil is less dense than the water. Oil tends to separate from water and be repelled by it. When something acts like this, we call it hydrophobic or water fearing. And now we're ready for our first investigation, ocean in a bottle. In this bottle, I have water that I colored blue with food coloring. And now I'm going to pour in oil. I filled it up nearly to the top with oil and put on the lid, and now I'm ready to tip it side to side and see the ocean in the bottle. The blue water, as it goes back and forth, looks a bit like ocean waves. And if you have some small plastic beads, you can make little boats that will float on the water. I made these little boats by gluing a toothpick into a plastic bead, and then I used the label from the water bottle which was sticky on one side, to make the little triangle sail. So we'll put in these little boats now and see how they do. So for just a few beads and food covering and oil, you can make your own little ocean in a bottle and sail some boats. This investigation starts just like the other one did with adding oil on top of colored water. But this time we'll leave the lid off and we'll add an antacid tablet. The tablet reacts with the water, forming carbon dioxide gas, and that gas carries the water up and it looks like a lava lamp.
oil is a fuel and it's flammable, but it has to be in the right conditions in order to light. If I were to try to light this cup of oil on fire right now with a match, the match just goes out. It won't light unless I provide it with more heat or more oxygen. And I can do that by making a little oil lamp with just a piece of cardboard. I cut a hole in the middle and put a wick of toilet paper through it. This is about a quarter square of toilet paper. And now if I press this into the oil, I can make a homemade lamp. And you might be thinking, oh, it's just the toilet paper burning, but it's not. It's the oil burning as well. Here's a closer look. For this lamp, I put colored water in the bottom of the cup so that then I didn't need to use as much oil. You can see the flame get longer as the oil starts to burn. Before we had electricity, oil lamps were a really common source of light. Let's turn off the lights and see what this oil lamp looks like. Not quite as light as a flashlight perhaps, but in an emergency, I could make myself my own homemade lamp. And you can see now that this is burning the oil because look how dark that smoke is that's coming up. It's a little gross to see all of that dark organic matter going up in the smoke. And if I put a towel here to kind of catch a little bit of that, you can see, you can see how it stains. So this type of oil lamp is not the most practical, but it's functional. I want to blow this out before I make a dark mark on my ceiling, so. There you have it. In our last investigation, I showed you that oil is flammable. Now we cook with oil, frequently, and so you need to know how to put out a grease fire if you accidentally catch the oil in your kitchen on fire when you're cooking. Let's step outside and I'll show you several safe ways that you can extinguish a grease fire. This box represents a house. Unfortunately, there is a grease fire in this house. Fortunately, there are several safe ways to put out a grease fire. Unfortunately, these people used water. And then the house burned down. To understand why water makes a grease fire explode, you need to know something about volume. This is a two liter bottle, and inside I have just two tablespoons of water, about the same amount that I put on the fire in the previous video. As a liquid, this water doesn't take up very much space, but if we heat it up and it expands to become a gas, it will have a much greater volume. How much bigger? All depends on the temperature and at 400 degrees Celsius, that's the temperature where oil will spontaneously catch fire, this much water will expand to fill 51 of these two liter bottles. This is just amazing. If you take two tablespoons of water and pour it onto a grease fire, it will expand and make a cloud of steam this big, 51 two liter bottles worth of steam. And the momentum of that expansion pushing out and up is what makes the grease fire explosion. To learn more about grease fires and why water and oil don't mix, check out the links in the description. And don't forget to head over to my website and download the free foldable book that goes along with this video. It has instructions for all of the investigations we just did, and you'll find a link to that in the description as well. Speaking of books, now it's time for book recommendations. Yay! We love books! Our book recommendation for this month is Nick and Tesla's Solar Powered Showdown by Bob Plugfelder and Steve Hawkinsmith. Not only is this book a fantastic adventure about two twins who save the day, it has instructions for how to build your own cool science gadgets like a hot dog cooker out of a Pringle can, or a solar-powered car. It's number six in a series of great books. 
all about the same two siblings, and one of the authors, Science Bob, he's the one that I learned the levitating orb trick from, which has got to be one of the coolest st static electricity experiments ever. So check this one out. Don't forget to check out the rest in the series. It's a really fun read, and like I said, great instructions in here for making cool science gadgets yourself. That's it. Work hard, grow smart. I'll see you next time. Before I show you these outtakes, I want to reiterate how important it is to be safe with fire. We filmed parts of this way out in the desert where there was nothing flammable around for miles. Always take safety precautions and learn from the mistakes that we made. I made a big mistake. I had just bought a new camp stove, and I didn't want that $40 to be wasted by being burned up. I thought my risky action had saved our camp stove until... But the stove didn't survive. Neither did the frying pan. Now that explosion is pretty cool, but what's not cool is that someone could have been seriously injured. Anytime you're doing science, you have to think ahead about potential safety hazards. Study what the risks are in advance, take the right precautions, and learn from the mistakes others have made. You can't plan for everything, and sometimes accidents do happen, but if you focus on safety first, you're practicing smart science.